So I decided to make another Q&A video, um, since it's been a while since I uploaded one. Um, so I collected some questions on my videos and I'll answer them. So the first question, um, if you decide to compete in powerlifting, do you plan to modify your squat bench technique towards a more traditional powerlifting style or not? Uh, interested to hear what you think of low bar parallel squatting or wide bench. Um, yeah, I actually uh, ask similar questions to this all the time, like uh, why don't I do low bar squats, um, why don't I round my upper back when deadlifting, and why do I just make my lifts harder than they should be. Um, well, there's a few reasons why I use a close grip on the bench, but um, it's funny because uh, a bunch of people replying to those comments were going into detail on why it probably carries over more to the Olympic lifts or why it suits me based on my body structure. But really, the main reason I do close grip is because it just looks better. Like, um, I don't really like the look of wide grip bench presses because the range of motion is so short. And this is the exact same reason why I don't do low bar back squats or just cut the depth. Um, it's just because it just simply doesn't look good. Like, I just don't like the aesthetics of it. Okay, so the next question. Um, Clarence, how fast did you progress in the squat and deadlift when you started? Uh, for example, how strong were you after um, your first or second year of training? Um, to be honest, I can't remember the exact weight I was lifting when I first uh, went to the gym. Um, before I started going to the gym, I used to lift with a weight set um, I bought, and I didn't have a squat rack or anything. And I think the weights went up to like 70 kilos, and my deadlift uh, was beyond that, for sure. Um, I think I remember only being able to bench press like 40 kilos. Um, at the time, I was mostly tricking and doing body exercises. And I, yeah, I think around that time, I was like 15 years old. Um, when I first went to the gym, I was quarter squatting. Um, I imagine my best acid squat was probably 70 or 80 kilos. Um, There's actually a video on my second channel of me squatting 125 kilos. And I think that was uh, my first year of training. Um, I was 15 at the time, and I think um, I was just over uh, 70 kilos. Um, but after a year of training, um, if you look back at my old videos, I was deadlifting 170 kilos. And after two years, I was snatching 112 kilos. Um, I was clean jerking 135 kilos and squatting around um, 170 kilos. Um, and that was all around uh, probably 77 kilos body weight. And it was actually in my third year training that I made um, a lot of progress. Um, I think I squatted 220 kilos and I cleaned 170 kilos. Um, if you look back at my old videos, you can see the progress. And I guess people could say um, I probably didn't have good genetics because um, the weights I was lifting when I first started weren't that impressive. But um, good genetics aren't really based off uh, the weights you start with. Um, it can be. But you can get two people who start lifting the same weights and one of them just might progress faster because they respond to training better. So even though I struggled to clean and jerk maybe like 40 or 35 kilos when I first started, um, I responded to training very well and I progressed really quickly. Um, I remember some weeks I actually added like 10 kilos onto my squats just in a week of training. <laughs> you know, it, the, the progress was crazy. I think, yeah, I think um, my squat went from like 160 kilos to 170 kilos in the space of like nine days or 10 days. Progress is very, very good at the start. So basically what I'm saying is you're not going to be able to predict how good you'll be at weightlifting until you try it. And this applies to any other sport. What is your training like? It looks like you do hybrid of powerlifting and weightlifting. And I would like to know how to work these two together. Um, yeah, it kind of is, I guess. Um, I tend to focus more on strength exercises compared to most weightlifters. But my training really uh, varies throughout the year. Um, some periods I'm focusing entirely on strength and doing the Olympic lifts like three times per week. And other times I'm focusing more on the Olympic lifts and doing them every day. Um, like if you check my profile on Grabless, you can see my training from February and see how it's changing. Like around that time, I was definitely focusing more on powerlifting um, than weightlifting. But right now, I'm definitely focusing more on weightlifting, and I'm probably doing the Olympic lifts um, pretty much every day. If you're trying to do powerlifting and weightlifting at the same time, it really isn't that difficult, uh, assuming your technique in the Olympic lifts is pretty good. Um, if you're a weightlifter who wants to do more powerlifting, uh, the main weakness would obviously 
be the bench press, um, but that can easily be done after the Olympic lifts and squats. Um, the only issue with it is that it can probably affect your mobility in the Olympic lifts. For example, um, a few months back, I was struggling with the clean jerk quite a bit because my mobility um, decreased um, from doing a lot of bench press. So I guess um, during certain periods of the year, you can focus more on weightlifting and other periods you can focus more on powerlifting. So for the deadlift, uh, going heavy once a week or once every two weeks uh, would be enough, assuming you're doing snatch and clean pulls in your training. Um, I wouldn't add too many variations of the power lifts and the Olympic lifts in your training since you'd already be doing um, a lot of exercises. At what point do you think a lifter can begin to train using the Bulgarian method? Um, to be honest, I don't think the grand majority of lifters should ever follow the Bulgarian method um, or even variations of it. Like um, I followed um, a similar program in the past, um, but it really only works in the short term. Like uh, to successfully progress with a Bulgarian method, you need to have very good genetics. Like you should be able to recover from training sessions really quickly. Um, you have to have strong joints and connective tissues and be more resistant uh, to injury than most people. Um, you also have to have a lot of training experience. Your technique needs to be very good, it needs to be very well developed um, so you can prevent injuries. And obviously um, one of the things that would help uh, with recovery are drugs, you know, and I assume most people don't use drugs. In my opinion, for beginner and intermediate weightlifters especially, High volume training is much safer since you'd be lifting uh, a smaller load and you'd be able to get more practice with the Olympic lifts since you'd be doing more total repetitions. So that's all the questions for this video. Um, I plan to make another Q&A video in the future and very soon um, I plan to make another example meal video because everyone's been asking me to make one of those. Um, if you have any suggestions for a future video, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more videos, uh, check out my Patreon. I post much more videos over there than I do on YouTube. And I do live streams every month and sometimes I do Q&As. Uh, the link will be in the description.